Hey guys, welcome back to another Python video. I'm really excited to be teaching you guys my favorite programming language in the whole wide world. And in this video, I'm going to show you a concept that I probably should have showed you earlier in the series, but I kind of saved it for later. And that's the concept of a tuple. What the heck is a tuple? Well, let's go ahead and dive right in and I'll show you. All right, so I went ahead and I've already prepared a script. I've marked it executable and I've done all that already. I went ahead and created our first line as we always do. I'm not gonna mention that again in the rest of the series because by now, you know. So I'm gonna show you the concept of a tuple. Now a tuple is a data type similar to a list in a, or a dictionary, things like that. It is in the same category, but it's a little bit different. It's very similar to a list, but there's one big difference which I'll get into. So to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tuple and then I'm gonna show you the difference. I'm gonna create a tuple called heroes and tuples can contain items just like lists can. And we're gonna enclose the tuple in parentheses and inside the parentheses, I'm going to uh, create some characters here. All right, so I created a tuple right here and inside the tuple, I created four items. I created four characters. The name of the tuple is heroes. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to do type on heroes, just so you can see that when we run it, that it actually is what I'm saying it is. And I'm going to print it. All right. All right, let's run it and see what happens. So looking at the output, it looks very similar to a list, doesn't it? You have four items here, and each one of them are shown in single quotes. And, you know, you'd be forgiven if you thought this was a list. Now, there's one big difference. I'll go ahead and bring this back. With a tuple, you can't actually change it after you create it. So to better understand this, it's important to understand an important concept in Python, which is whether or not an object is mutable. A mutable object can be changed. You can basically you know, add a value to it if it's a list, for example, or a dictionary. If, you, know, you could basically make changes to it, whereas if it's immutable, you can't make changes to that object after it's created. Now here we have a tuple and we have these four items in here. Now, the Joker is not a hero, so he really shouldn't be in this list. Unfortunately, we're not able to remove this item. We've already created this tuple, so we can't actually edit it and take him out. So what do we do? So if I minimize this and we go into our Python shell, let's go ahead and recreate this tuple. I'll just execute the same statement that I did in the script. And you can see that we did in fact create that. And we have that tuple. So let's go ahead and ignore the rules and try to change this tuple anyway, even though we know we can't, or at least I'm telling you we can't. Let's go ahead and try to do it anyway. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and write out heroes Let's access item number two, which is Joker. Remember, we count from zero, zero, one, two. And I wanna set that equal to Thor. I'll press enter and we get an error. And right here you can see tuple does not support item assignment. So what can we actually do? Unfortunately, not much. We can delete it. So what I could do is use the Dell keyword here and then heroes. Now, if I do type, heroes doesn't exist because the DEL or delete keyword removes that item or that object, just takes it out. And I can simply recreate it. I can manually change the Joker to Thor and print it. And I essentially edited the tuple, well, not really, I deleted it and recreated it, but essentially that's, you know, our options are limited here because a tuple is an immutable data type. So back here in our script, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the other two lines. 
and just talk about one of the main differences here between a tuple and a list, other than the fact that it is immutable. All right, so what I've done here is I went ahead and I just copied and pasted that line. I know I always say don't repeat yourself, but in this video, we're just looking at a concept. This isn't really a script anybody would actually use for anything. But you can see right here that the tuple, we create it with parentheses, whereas with the list, we use square brackets like I have right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and write a few print statements here. Just a couple print statements, nothing fancy there. Let's go ahead and run it. Now here you can see that a tuple and a list is indeed very similar, especially when you have them side by side. We see that we have the tuple on the top with parentheses and the list on the bottom with square brackets. But other than that, they essentially look exactly the same. So here I am with just the tuple, and I'm gonna show you that we can actually iterate over it with a for loop the exact same way we would with a list. So for h in euros, print h. All right, let's go ahead and run it. And we can see that it printed each individual item. No surprise there. Now another thing I wanna show you is the length function or len function, which looks like that. Now this isn't really specific to tuples. It's just that this is something I probably should have showed you earlier. I never got a chance to, and you can use this function with a tuple. So I guess it's just as good of a time as any right now to show you this. So what I'm gonna do is show you how that works. So I'm gonna write a print statement and I'm gonna use the len function or length function, and I'm going to print heroes. So what exactly is this going to do? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'll run it again, and we get the number four. So as you probably guessed, len or length basically gives you a printout of how many items there are in that data type. So I could have done this with a list, for example, and it would have worked just the same way. So this again, isn't specific to a tuple, but you know you can actually use it, the same functions with a tuple as you can with a list. So you might be wondering, why even use a tuple? It's just like a list, but it has one major drawback that you can't change anything, so why not just use lists for everything? Well, in programs, when you write them, you're gonna have some data that just needs to stay the same. They're constants, they don't change. And then you're gonna have other things that do change and you wanna make a conscious decision that you're using the best data type for every scenario in your program. Now that's actually something that comes with time. You're not gonna know straight away all the times that you use one data type or use another data type. It's part of the learning and now you know that tuples can't change. So if you have data in your program that should never change, it's probably better to use a tuple. It's safer that way, so that way you don't have anything else in your script that's gonna accidentally change it. It can't change it. So if you need something to stay the same, then a tuple is great for that. But in addition, tuples are, are faster and they also use less memory as well. So there's a performance benefit to be gained as well. In our program, that doesn't really matter because we're simply printing and then we exit. It's certainly not using a lot of memory. And even if it was, it exits just as quick as it starts. But when you're actually writing a real production program, you're probably going to be keeping track of a lot of data. So being conscious about resources is very important. Again, you don't have to spend too much time worrying about that right now. Just keep in mind that you really should focus on making your programs lean and knowing when the appropriate time to use a data type is so you can make your programs more efficient. So there you go. That was your tutorial on tuples. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you wanna help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again.